The breaking news is the latest track from Matthew just released by the National Hurricane Center, and it is unchanged. If you're hearing talk that it has shifted east, it really has not. Again, the track is unchanged, which is not good news for us. We're looking at a Category 3 hurricane hitting our area. If you live near a large body of water, you are urged to evacuate right now. Time is running out. Two million people along the Florida, Georgia coastline and in the Carolinas have left their homes. Just into our newsroom, new video of Matthew making landfall in the Bahamas. You can see the storm lashing the island. That sailboat right there swaying back and forth in the wind. And now taking a look here at home. Ooh, a crush of drivers on the interstate heading west, getting out of Jacksonville. We continue... We continue to bring you the latest on Matthew to keep you safe. Our crews are positioned all along the coast tonight, but let's get right to John for the latest track. John. And again, um, Mary, we all have hopes at this point. And, uh, you know, for us in the weather office, we've all experienced seeing some of these storms come through. Right now, you're looking at Live 5 Doppler radars. I'm going to start here because I want to show folks that the rains, again, have, been begin have begun to pick up across Jacksonville, and these rains are going to intensify as we go through the overnight hours, and these rains, again, are not associated with Matthew. Matthew, again, way down south. This is all a part of the nor'easter. The purple here, everybody under the, along the coast under the hurricane warning right now as, again, we continue to see that rain come on shore from the northeast winds. As we look back down to the south, we find, again, the hurricane just off the coast. And this is where it gets very challenging because I'm going to show you how this is looping around. And we're going to see moments like this where there's going to be glimmers of hope. And the hope here will be that the storm itself will begin to wobble back out into the coastal waters. And as it whirl, wobbles into the coastal waters further away from the United States, it might change the track up just a little bit. So that's what's happening on Live 5 Doppler radars right now. By the way, hurricane hunters are out there right now, and they're finding those winds up to around 140 miles an hour. And again, tonight, we're going to have to watch this very, very closely as any adjustment to the track at this point would be either beneficial for us or again, just about as bad as it could get for us as well. So tonight, that's where the hurricane is. The latest from the hurricane center. The hope here was we saw a little wobble here in about the last hour and a half towards the north. And you can actually see it kind of gliding like that. But sometimes, as you can see, there's like a donut ring here and a donut ring there. And the regard here is that these are two concentric eye walls. And when you get one eye wall, this is where the winds will be extremely strong, but it's here where the maximum winds are. These little rope, little vortices that you see there, they represent where the winds are probably over 140 miles an hour. There's the five o'clock uh, update from the Hurricane Center. There's their forecast track. And Tom mentioned a three, and I looked at the details here, and the details are it actually brings it on shore now right there near Cocoa Beach. And maybe the shift actually was a little inland since the uh, 11 o'clock update. And because that little shift inland occurred, now we're going to see this thing weaken as it uh, moves up the coast. Now remember, this is going to wobble all the way up the beach. So when it wobbles like this, it may weaken, it may not weaken, but it will likely hit one beach, wobble off the coast, hit another beach, and so on and so forth as it marches its way all the way up the coast over the next day or so. Storm surge potential, this is still unchanged from the earlier forecast model. We'll get an update on this particular model in about 35, 40 minutes. I can't wait to see what it says because if it's only category three as it comes up this way, that should bring these values down a little bit because we don't want these values. The white here literally blots out everybody along the coast. And as we take a look at this, uh, this would suggest that only a few locations along the beaches would not actually flood out. And you'll see those by the little color areas. And so all of this would actually potentially go underwater if in fact we would have, again, a category four hurricane come through, but I just said, the Hurricane Center is now going to bring it down to a three as it weakens as it comes up the coast. What about power outages? Widespread, likely all the way up the coast as it continues to go by us. Again, 
Not showing as high as it did earlier, but we'll see uh, the next model updates on this as well. That will happen around 5.30 as well. So we'll get a feel for whether or not the intensity of the storm will weaken a little bit due to the fact that it's so close to the coast, and that may lessen the impact along the beaches. But I got to tell you, I don't see any change in this. When I created this graphic, I was using the parameters for Category 3 because I made it last night. It was during the daytime hours here today that there were some indications it could be a Category 4 storm just off our, our coast, and the devastation would be far greater. But I'm here to say the beaches, it's going to be very dramatic. The potential for life, you know, life-endangering type of weather will go from wind to water in about 12 hours, uh, sometime during the daytime hours tomorrow. Again, all the barrier islands got to get out of there. Maximum winds gusting up to 100 miles an hour extensive and lengthy power outages. You're not going home on Saturday afternoon when the storm goes by. I can guarantee you that unless some miracle occurs and it goes out to sea, like by 50 or 100 miles, which is seeming very, very unlikely, it was going to be at least a good two or three, maybe up to a week before we could even go assess the damage out there along the beaches. Again, along the coast, you heard about it, but here's the coastal rivers. No major changes here because, if anything, if it's closer to the coast, the impact will be a little bit higher right there along the beaches. Power out is very likely. Mandarin, all the way back out there, Orange Park, back down south, Middleburg. There will be high winds here, gusting up to 50, 60 miles an hour. And, yeah, I may be talking about the waterways here, but all of those areas just west of or just east of, like up and down I-95 in St. John's County, World Golf Village, you folks are going to deal with massive power outages as well. They may be more easily brought back online because they won't be as uh, disturbed or destroyed by the storm as they may be right there at the beach. But understand, when I show you these qualities here, this goes from Clay County to West Side, Argyle Forest, back out there north of town, Normandy, and then back all the way in towards, let's say, Nassau County. Yuli, you'll probably be seeing a little bit of the mix between the beaches and this but it will be very destructive. And again, the rainfall, a little bit of good news here. Despite the heavy rains we're tracking right now on Life 5 Doppler Raiders, we are likely to see not as wet as a pattern that we could have seen. I'll tell you more about that coming up here in a few minutes. Again, Tom, the headline here, the track is so close to the coast right now down south of us, a weakening Matthew as a Category 3 would by just roll off our coast sometime tomorrow evening. I'll go the hour by our forecast, tell you when to expect the worst of it in just a few minutes.